Hello everybody, welcome back, and um, we're going to have a look at, at just the general market on this video, and I am going to make a video on Algorand as well today, because I think there's a decent setup there with a decent move. We are doing the Patreon live stream tonight, so we do this twice a week, Tuesdays, Friday evenings, and if you want to join that, there's links in the description below. Um, best time to set up is, uh, is actually the beginning of the month, actually, because... Well, that's when you get billed, I suppose. Right, so let's have a look at um, the overall markets first, right? So Dixie is neither here nor there. It's finding support on the uh, higher term moving averages, basically the 50, the 200. It's getting resistance on the 20, on the daily, so it's neither here nor there. Uh, I'm, I'm not so sure if it's going to break out or break down. It doesn't really know. If I had to put my money on it, I would probably say that it's going to break out or at least have another move up towards the 105.3. But <clears throat> I'm also not particularly sold on this idea either. I think the best thing to do is accept that it's range bound until it decides to break the range. And then that's going to be the way that we're going to continue. S&P 500 futures market. Um, what we're seeing is a continuation up going to a new all-time high basically it looks like that's where it wants to go we do have uh, money flow index overheated read with bearish divergence afterwards on the way up we also have subtle divergence reads bearish divergence on the on the way up as well for rsi and the weekly obviously overheated read on the money flow index with bearish divergence read so uh, this is um i would say you know it's it's overheated let's just call it overheated last time we saw something like this was over here in uh, January 18 and uh, we did come down quite dramatically and we spent what looks like a few months a couple of months at least consolidating before the next move up um, so look I, I'm, I'm not here to tell you that it's, it's going to go up nor down I know that's frustrating I'm here to tell you that actually you know whether it goes up or down the risk is quite high at this level for S&P and uh, we should assume that um, any new positions on the S&P or stocks in general and maybe even crypto are a little risky. <clears throat> On an anecdotal level, um, it is often the case that uh, crypto marks the peak. Uh, the, the markets are very much tied into each other. Um, Bitcoin basically pumping uh, towards the previous all-time high. We're not too far away from that. Obviously, 69. We're sitting here at 61. Uh, yesterday, we hit reads of 64. I think 65 is the candle body high between 65, 66. So we're very close to meeting what could be considered the all-time high. I know it's not the peak or the wick, but the candle bodies and uh, other co uh, corresponding wicks around 65. So let's just think about that. We're breaking out of this resistance trend line on the money flow index. Um, and again, you know, this is still bearish divergence, but there is a change of behavior here. There is no bearish divergence on the RSI. Normally, you would, you would see some bearish divergence on the RSI on the way up to lead into a, uh, a, a bigger drop. Um, same thing over here, another big bearish divergence read that marked the peak. We don't have that. So <clears throat> there's a few ways to try and interpret this, and, and it goes to the things I've been seeing on Twitter, people saying about ETF money. Well, I mean, it's pretty easy to see that people are just, or Bitcoin is just being bought blindly, right, through other means other than this particular chart. This chart is a reference of price at this point, um, not so much a reference of where to buy it from. You know, there is trading taking place, and but we, we have to recognize that this is super bullish, even on the daily, not even having a chance to get picked up on a 10 exp uh, on a 7 simple. Uh, so the, the, it's very, very bullish. So a lot of people say, and I see this now, you won't get a rotation into altcoins this time because all the money is going into the ETF, and that's locked into the ETF with no possibility to rotate. That's true. That is true. But looking at Binance, just Binance alone, obviously the, the largest crypto trading exchange, uh, I can show you that actually the volume is significant on Binance alone. Bitcoin, USDT, the last 24 hours of trading saw $4 billion. $4 billion dollars traded just in the last 24 hours ethereum two billion bnb half a bill solana 1.6 bill xrp half a bill usd to usd <laughs> well, so i'm telling you now that there is plenty of volume going around here it's not a nothing thing there is plenty of, of volume uh ready to rotate uh, that is a lot 
right? Four billion. It might not be the half a billion a day or whatever's um, been said that's going into the ETS, but it's still four billion, right? And that's just like I say, it's in and out, in and out. Trade this, trade that. But you know, that's that's what it's referring to. So there's, it's not all ETF money. There's plenty of people, including myself and probably you as well, that's getting pretty rich on, you know. Uh, retail trading exchanges, you know, and that's just Binance. You know, there's dozens more, isn't there, really, of, of um, trading exchanges that I'm sure have all got enormous volume. So there's plenty of Bitcoin ready to rotate um, for anyone who wishes to do that. So I think to say that it won't come, uh, uh, that there won't be a rotation is, you know, I don't think that that's an accurate um, way to view what we're looking at here. It may not, but not because it can't. It might not just because the charts might decide that actually this is enough for everybody and they're all going to come down. Like I say, we've seen Dixie is umming and iron, has no real idea of what exactly it wants to do. Uh, S&P is definitely getting quite hot, NASDAQ being the same. Um, and obviously crypto, you don't need to you don't need me to remind you that this is pretty, pretty significant ups, upside here. So the <coughs> rotation, it can easily happen. There's plenty of money to rotate. If anybody decides to do it, that's yeah. There's plenty of money to do it. So just putting that out there. Don't uh, don't believe everything you hear on Twitter because it's not true. <laughs> it's just a theory. It's just like mine is just a theory. No one's no one knows exactly what's going on. But I just wanted to show you that there is the volume there. Um, uh, or, and if anyone wants to rotate, it's, yeah, four billion will do. Four billion or two. Right, so let's have a think about this. We got Bitcoin halving countdown. Fifty one days left. Fifty one point twelve fifty one and a half days, so that would be days left. Roughly speaking. So yeah, mid April. So we've got this whole month now of March. What's it gonna do in March? I, 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 normally we wouldn't see Bitcoin pumping this hard uh, at this point before the halving. So uh, any direction is uh, is is fine. However, considering how bullish it is, I still think it's going to get picked up and continue up. So while that's happening, the market should generally still do that. Um, we're <coughs> currently f finding support on the 10 exponential on the 4 hourly, which is the first opportunity really to get picked up on any time frame. The 4 hourly seems to be more relevant than anything because it's such a bullish chart. Let's have a look at momentum over here. Um, there is nothing really to be concerned about a tiny drive of bearish divergence, but it looks like it's moved into a consolidation. So, fair play. It looks like it probably wants to get picked up around these levels even now. Now, I'm not suggesting anybody go long or take positions. It's, it's really not for, for me. In fact, um, for all the, the 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 dads in the school queue that have, you know, that I've that, that forced me to get them into crypto, they all want to buy now. And I said, no, no, no. Look, you bought. You know, last year. Now, what you should do is just leave it. Don't buy any more. I know you want to buy more because you see it going up, but that's not the way to do it for your average Joe. Anyway, you can trade it if you've got the skill, you know, the time, the risk management, you know, the attention to detail. You can trade it, of course. But if you're a dad in the school queue that's uh, looking for, you know, waiting for my my arrival uh, to tell you what to do next. You can't. You shouldn't really be doing anything next. You should just allow for this asset now and all the things that you bought to mature in price. And uh, this is the fun part, really, where you bought low and now you're watching it go up. But there is setups on other altcoins, and like I say, this is why I'm not so much, uh, a, a, you know, into the idea of there not being a rotation. So it's final. Finally, we'll look at the Bitcoin dominance. <coughs> Yesterday. And we saw a move up to the 55% dominance, which is basically this previous high and also the uh, where the mouth of this descending triangle begun. Uh, and we're getting a small rejection from that. Alts did outperform Bitcoin yesterday, um, and they may still see a bit more outperformance uh, in the short term. Uh, we haven't seen a rotation yet. Um, we're not likely to see a rotation until Bitcoin establishes a peak, and we don't know where that is. Uh, we do have uh, another drive of bearish divergence from yesterday, which is good. Um, so this uh, makes the case that we could come back down to 53.6% dominance, which is the descending trend and the um, and the uh, 20 moving average, as well as all these other moving averages that are blending into this area. So look, uh, there's evidence for further upside on alts, evidence for further upside on everything. Uh, it's not a, a doom and gloom um, 
uh, video, absolutely not. It's one of caution to be thinking about what major tops look like, not just in uh, Bitcoin, but in broader markets. It's there. There is really not much more to say about it. I strongly believe that we are going to see some big moves in alts, but we might start to see some pretty jagged um, moves down before we see that. Um, if Bitcoin were to uh, push down to the 10 exponential on the daily, that's a 7 towards an 8% move to 56.8... Why did I say it like that? 56,800 um, uh, if it were to do it today and still maintain a very bullish chart. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But if we were to see that for Bitcoin, you would emphasize that move across the board for whatever altcoin you're trading. So just remember that. You know, altcoins will likely see a rotation in my opinion um but are they going to rotate from the top and then they just go straight up that's not how it's happened in the past and uh, the, the last time we saw these huge rotations was around this area and bitcoin rallied all the way up pulled back uh, significantly and with every single pullback altcoin started to rally now from the top to the bottom over a period of only basically um three days we saw a correction of 28 uh, percent Altcoins did that and more, but do you know what happened after that? Altcoins bounced way harder, way faster, uh, and basically while Bitcoin consolidated, altcoins basically rallied hundreds of percent. Now, we might be looking at a similar kind of behavior right now, but it's not going to be the same. It's similar, but not the same. Nothing is going to be the same ever again. Because Bitcoin is doing something that it's never done before. It's got money, money coming in from areas that's never been seen before. Um, and so, yeah, we can assume something different is happening. But also, behavior is kind of similar. So, there is no exact science to this right now. There is only conviction in your individual trades. I've got conviction in mine. Um, but I'm still 70% in cash at this point now. And I will start to load up on alts if we see deeper corrections on Bitcoin in anticipation for that similar behavior. That, kind, that, that, that it would be opportunity. But to start piling into alts at this level, outside of the ones that I've already piled into, kind of hard to justify that kind of you know, degenerate move. It's not to say that you're not going to make money, but I'm just telling you now, my preference would be to wait for pullbacks to see if the same behavior as 2021 um, starts to uh, rear its pretty little golden head, because that, that's, that would be the dream. But all markets are pretty hot, right? So we just, we just have to recognize that for what it is. All markets are hot. So we might get our fingers burned. That's all I'm saying. A deep correction or consolidation is definitely around the corner, not just for Bitcoin and crypto, but S&P, NASDAQ, everybody. Let's think about that for what it is. Let's just have a think about that. Right, I'll leave it with you there, but I hope you have a nice day. Take it easy. And maybe I'll see you on the live stream. Thanks for watching.